Hello everybody. So today's talk might surprise you, but I'm, I'm a growth investor and I invest in megatrends in general. And um, when this stock was suggested in the comment section, I was like, let me look, let, let me take a look at it. And I was very surprised with what I saw. So let me let me get started and let's talk about Chewy and let's talk about the pet industry. So first of all, here, here are a few observations. On this channel, I have a few stocks that are based on cultural trends, social cultural mega trends, right? And so I consider, for example, the pet industry to be part of this social cultural mega trend that we can invest in because we invest in trends on this channel, growth trends, right? Not, I mean, technology is a big trend, renewable energy is a big trend, but there's other trends out there. Pets are definitely a social cultural mega trend and it is growing. It's an industry that is growing and that's the topic is right up my alley. So let's talk about pets a little bit. Why would you, why would anybody want to invest in the pet business? Well, first of all, pets are cute. And uh, this, this is a scientific way uh, to, to describe this industry. Um, it's actually um, really important to understand that people get pets because pets are cute. And this is a, a, a phenomenon that we call the what is beautiful is good phenomenon. Uh, for some reason, we are attracted for, by things that, that we find appealing. And so if you look at um, many of the foundational reasons as to why businesses behave the way they behave, Oftentimes it has to do with this phenomenon. Like for example, if you look at the Tesla Model 3 and Model Y, it was uh, designed after the picture of a woman, right? Uh, Elon Musk entered a room and showed the picture of a woman and said, hey, the car needs to look like this. It's the what is beautiful is good phenomenon. No need to explain it. It's a phenomenon, but people like things that are cute and pets are cute. They're cute. That's why people buy pets. And, and this industry, of course, as a saving mechanism, has been, has been developing cuter and cuter pets, right? Because the, the, the more cute a pet is, you know, cute is just, just our way to say a pet is beautiful. We call them cute. The more cute a pet is, the more pet adoption you have. And of course, breeders are doing a really good job at making cuter and cuter pets. Like, for example, the, the cockapoo, the labradoodle, I don't know much about pets, but I know that some are exclusively bred to, to look appealing to us so that we adopt them and buy them. So that's the first trend. It appeals to this, this basic trend of, of what is beautiful is good phenomenon. We're attracted to things that we find attractive. Pets, uh, pets are cute, so we like pets and we buy pets uh, as a society in general, right? Not not individually, everybody is different, but as a society in general, uh, we do that. But there's other reasons why would anybody get a pet? Why, why would you get a pet? Well, pets address a real societal uh, need, right? They used to be for hunting, most mostly mostly for for hunting is what hunting and and herding and other things. But they're not for that anymore. They're, they're really not or barely at all for hunting. Today, pets are mostly used because they bring company and company is very important these days because we are seeing way lower rates of family formation and the lower the rate of family formation the more you're going to have single people who decide to have pets and of course the events of 2020 have not helped the rate of family formation when people don't meet for like 12 to 18 months uh, you don't have families that get formed a few years later it's very logical but that's that's a mega trend that really leads to the adoption of more pets pets are also lower or commitment than children and so we see a lot of people who are like okay I'm gonna get a pet and maybe a pet can be a substitute for children it may sound silly when you say it like that but it's 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 actually uh, important as you'll see in the, the next uh, bullet point here um, also so not only is it lower commitment than children so you get company with a pet it's lower commitment than children and it's also two orders of magnitude i.e. 100 times cheaper than children and this of course is is the the, the merging of the economic trend with with a social cultural trend. You may not have a child because a child, according to the Department of Agriculture, is something like $500,000 uh, until they reach 18 or some crazy statistic like that. But you may get a, get a pet because a pet um, a pet costs, you know, I mean, it's, it's just a fraction, just a fraction of the cost of, of, of what, what a, a kid um, uh, costs. Of course, not entirely comparable. 
obviously. Um, but but it is relevant to speak of this like this because Gen Z. Uh, I should have said I should have put millennials. Millennials here are more than Gen Z. Gen Z and millennials, you know, they call themselves pet parent. You're not you're not a pet owner anymore. You're you're a pet parent. Pet parents spend more. Pet parents consider their pets uh, part of their family. Um, there has been a strengthening in the pet culture, right? Pets are not considered property anymore. They are considered uh, a family. And, and you know, and, and just do this experiment. Drive around your town if you live in a big town and look at how many stickers you see behind cars that says, oh, pet mom, pet, pet parent. You know, proud, proud owner of a insert breed of dog, right? So they, so, uh, so it's, it's, it's not, you know, it, it's not like, you know, university mom, like I'm proud of my kid for going to college anymore. It's also people who are just proud of their pets and owning their pets. This is a real mega trend. It's a social cultural trend. I believe pets are going to become more and more important as we go through the years. And, and, and that's, that's good. You want to be invested in a trend like this, right? It's not, it's not a declining industry. It's a growing industry. Uh, point number two here is that the numbers, the current numbers and the current numbers of adoption, I'd be very careful at looking at them right now in 2023 or 2022. They're going to be flawed because uh, there were crazy amounts of adoption of pets during 2020 uh, and 2021, right? Pets pets solve the issue of loneliness. And so you had so much adoption. And this is a company that's going through the overhang of, of that adoption prior adoption that was abnormal abnormally high adoption a bit a little bit like zoom like zoom is going through this period where where it's seeing sluggish growth because it had an abnormal adoption of its product in 2020 and 2021 so so this creates a lot of dysfunctions which makes it hard to analyze because i don't know what the normalized growth rate for a pet industry is because now every single pet company is going through this overhang still um but nonetheless there's more to say so Typically, when you would look at a company like a, like Chewy, a new business in a, in a sector, you would look at the legacy competition and be like, oh, the legacy competition is going to come and it's going to crush them. The legacy competition is going to be so uh, so good and, and you know there's no way. Except the problem in the case of a pet industry is that there, there's real idiosyncratic reasons as to why the, the legacy competition is in, is in trouble. Um, in fact, legacy legacy brands, and I think this, is, this has mostly to do with social media, but legacy brands of dog food, you know, for example, Purina, but but not only even even um, was it Blue Blue Buffalo even Blue Buffalo, which was a brand that was created to address these issues. These legacy brands are coming under attack by Gen Z and millennials, who are, who are uh, you know explaining why uh, the legacy brand is not good for the dog, and they have all of these reasons. And uh, uh, the, the, the reasons, quite frankly, sometimes when you look at it, they, they seem legitimate reasons, but I'm not an expert. Um, but because of that, you have this entire backlash against legacy brands. So again, the competition is coming. Is the competition, is com is the competition coming when you have such a backlash against legacy brands? And then you also have backlash against retailer, Petco and PetSmart lately. Uh, um, uh, I I don't know if you follow social media. I don't I don't follow it much, but this makes it sometimes to you know regular social media like Twitter and stuff. And, and you know we've seen people of like um, you know. Uh, customers accusing these companies like PetSmart or Penco to like throw to to throw away live animals, which which is obviously highly highly unethical. And and this this may explain why um, you know why you have issues like this. Like this is Wolf. First. I'm sorry, it's a ticker symbol. It's kind of crazy. Uh, of a ticker symbol, Wolf, Petco, you can see the stock is down more than 80%. And it's like, well, maybe you should have spent a little less time uh, picking a clever ticker and more time focusing on the business and making sure that you don't have a, a major boycott against against your, your company. And, and of course, that's within the landscape. So you have a boycott against your company, legacy company, that sells everything that Chewy sells, right? In a landscape that is already troubled um, um, because, of course, physical retail is getting disrupted itself by automated warehouses. And Chewy, I listened to their, their conference call the other day, they have actually five automated warehouses. Uh, so you're, you're, you're getting disrupted by these warehouses that sell everything at the tip of a button and ship it to you. Um, and as a legacy player, all, all you find to do is, is do things that are questionable. Um, and then you get you get boycotted 
in the era of social media, which 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 is really really not good not good for our business. And there's like various videos of uh, of um, youngsters co confronting the employees uh, online, and it's yeah. I mean, if you're if you're a pet owner and your feed is all about pets, and you see this, how likely are you to to shop at one of the legacy players? Probably less likely. Uh, probably less likely. So, in conclusion. Enter Chewy. Will Chewy uh, kind of take over and kind of solve these issue, these issues? Will they be solved by Chewy? Well, there's a few things to say about Chewy. First of all, Chewy is pretty cheap. Um, so in my spreadsheet, it is cheap. It's it's not it's not like Hims cheap or it's not Stone Co cheap, but it's it's you know it's 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 cheaper than than say kind of the average stock in my spreadsheet, which would be Tesla. Like Tesla is not the cheapest stock, not the most expensive stock in my hyper growth rating spreadsheet. This would be about about, you know, 50% cheaper than a Tesla, much more expensive than say a company like him. But the, the stock is cheap for, for a growth investor. So looking at it through the, low, through the lens of a growth investor, it is cheap. You're not paying much for that revenue growth, but the revenue growth is very low at 12%. But even then you're not paying much for that revenue growth at a 0 0.3. And this relates to what I was saying. How much of that low revenue growth is due to the fact that customers are overstocked? They, they've overstocked on all of the stuff in 2021, 2022. You know, they got all of, all of the chew toys, all of the dog toys, all of the dog apparel, re, dog clothing. They purchased it all. So the customers stocked up and thus you're seeing the revenue growth at only 12%, which I'm a growth snob. So for me, it's not very, 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 very good. But um, nonetheless, when you look at the charts, I mean, this 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 chart is all too familiar and, and, and very much uncanny for Chewy. I mean, if you, if you put the chart of Zoom, it looks just the same. This was, this was a, a 2020 stock, 2020 story, you know, went up almost to 120, actually a little more than $120 a share. And now it's it's back down from its peak. So so down more, well, well, well above 80% from the peak down. Um, but actually, if you if you had bought it at IPO in, in um, you know, in, in uh, 2019, I believe in 2019, if you, if you bought it at IPO, um, well, you know, you, 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 you would have been essentially flat. I mean, right now you'd have been down 25%, but roughly, you know, three months ago, you would have been, you would have been flat and three months ago, you would have been up. So, so the stock hasn't moved much. Uh, it's, you know, the, the pattern does not represent the business performance because actually the growth has never stalled for Chewy. It's just slowed down, but it's never gone down, if that makes sense. That growth has never, never decreased. Much better performance than, than Woof. I'm sorry, I can't call it Petco. I'm just going to call it Woof now. Uh, Woof is a minus 80%. So again, again, clever, clever ticker name, but not 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 very good, not very good stock performance. Um, so that's interesting, right, right there. The stock is cheap from a chart standpoint. It's cheap from a price to sell standpoint, and from my metrics. So this is an in inexpensive company. Um, should we salivate at the chewy? opportunity as investors, right? Should we, uh, you know, is there, is there something to be happy with? Well, there is. And this is, this is, this is, the, this is the compelling uh, reason why I did this video. 75% of their sales are auto ship. So, so 75% is on for things like, like food and, and that food is shipped automatically. So, that's a recurring revenue business, which we just for that, if, if, if the market were to recognize that this is a recurring sales business, you know, there should be a valuation upgrade. There should be a, a, a re-rating in valuation of the stock if they realize that actually, wait, all of the sales, they don't have to fight for their sales, right? 75% of their sales are recurring. They don't have to fight for it now. Of course, we don't we don't live in a normal market environment. And so uh, betting on that, on that re-rating falls under a purview of value investors. It's value investors who, who, who do that. For me, I, me, I'm paying for the current growth and I want to see the current growth now. Value investors, you know, they look at this stuff and they're like, well, you know, it's 75% recurring sales. Really, companies that have this level of recurring sales should be trading much higher. And I agree, but who knows when the market will make up and start making sense again. Uh, gross margin have been steadily going up. And this is a company that has followed Wall Street and fo you know fo followed the, the prescriptions of Wall Street and they've achieved profitability. They are gap profitable at 22 million in net income. They've paid millions in taxes this quarter in Q1. So they are they are profitable, exactly what Wall Street wants. And of course, Wall Street is giving them the respect they deserve. No, not at all. Wall Street has not given them any respect, despite having achieved that 
profitability that you know all of the market pundits say companies need to achieve you know i don't like to see that obviously especially when you have um, cash flow of 127 million I, w- I would rather be that cash flow essential see that cash will be essentially flat and see this company invest heavily in marketing to get back to the 40 ish percent growth that it was getting prior to this uh, to this uh, post 2021 uh, um, environment for for chewy right so should we salivate at the Chewy opportunity? Well, there's, a, there's a two, two reasons as to why I'm going to stay away from the stock. One of them is really minor for me. This is something that doesn't bother me, but it's, it bothers a lot of people, so I'll point that right there. Chewy is not founder-led. It has only 2% insider ownership. Um, so, again, to many investors, that's a problem. To me, my, my view is buy a business that even a fool can run because eventually one will. So what that essentially means is I believe the business is more important than the leadership, and therefore I don't have a problem with... with um, with that lower ownership, that lower insider ownership. But I understand it's a big red flag for some people, so I'm putting it out there. Um, what's a red flag for me, though, and is not a red flag for a lot of people, but it's a red flag for me, is the growth at 12%. The current 12% estimate, next 12 month growth of 12%, to me, is just too low. My threshold to include a stock on my channel is 30%. I want to see at least 30% growth. And I would be interested in this company. This company was growing like in 2019 again, because in 2019, they were growing at 40%. You can see uh, uh, up until two Januarys ago, they, they were, I mean, they even beat 50% year over year growth. So they were growing well around 40% for quite a while. And and and, and ever since we, we, we've gotten into that, into that um, post- 2020 2021 um, drop in sales just like a few stocks that were associated with with uh, with the events of 2020 are, are going through right now right zoom is the other big stock stock that comes to mind um, to me in conclusion it's a very interesting stock I, I definitely um, enjoy thinking about this mega trend I think it's an interesting societal trend um, but uh, you know I, I I wouldn't buy it because I think there's much better opportunities out there but if you're attracted if you're attracted by this industry if someone if someone really knows this industry and wants exposure to this industry um, um, this is a fine stock so anyways this was not investment advice this is just entertainment hope you were entertained please like please subscribe have a wonderful day.